Hello, everyone. Thank you all for joining us today. My name is Jen Ezel, and I'll be the moderator for today's session. Before I introduce you to today's speaker, I have a few things I'd want to share with you. This session will be recorded and will be sent to all of you afterwards to share. And also, we'll have a Q&A session that will open up at the end of the presentation. All right. Well, thanks, uh, Jen. And uh, hello, everyone. Thanks for uh, joining us uh, today. I'm really excited to, uh, to host this webinar uh, together with our beloved partner, uh, Content Bloom. Uh, but before I hand over to my guest speaker, uh, I would like to you know, share uh, a couple of thoughts uh, from a .CMS uh, perspective. As you may know, uh, and, and this is really where .CMS stands for, uh, we're all about delivering the content foundation uh, as a service that, that allows you guys to build and orchestrate what we call connected, trusted, and continuous uh, customer experiences. Now, there's a lot of hybrid uh, implicit in that vision uh, statement. Uh, so let me share that with you, uh, what it actually means. Um, First of all, uh, .CMS is an API-first uh, CMS, and it actually means that from a single .CMS instance, you can expose uh, your, con your content anywhere uh, you want, right? Whether it's a web page, a landing page, an intranet, a mobile app, or what have you. There's literally no restrictions in, in that regard, so you can really uh, double down on an omni-channel uh, strategy. Uh, secondly, um, and this is a mouthful, uh, .CMS is all about no-code, low-code, and full-code, right? So no-code really delivering the tools uh, that non-technical users uh, can use to be self-sufficient and independent from IT to uh, fulfill their uh, digital marketing strategy. Uh, and low-code is really about... Um, you know, uh, scripting tooling to build custom uh, endpoint. And then lastly, uh, you can, you know, uh, make it a full uh, coding exercise if you want to, or if that makes sense for you uh, when it comes to uh, advanced templates or even OSGI uh, custom plugins, right? So everybody wins uh, when it comes to coding. Uh, and and uh, that's where .CMS uh, stands for. Now, content publishing also has a variety uh, of uh, characteristics, right? So you can publish content statically or uh, dynamically, uh, but uh, you can also uh, publish content instantly after approval or schedule uh, the publishing um, as you see fit for a specific uh, time window. Um, obviously, you can schedule an individual uh, object or uh, a batch of objects, whether it's a content page or pages, uh, et cetera. So a lot of flexibility or hybridness as you, as you will uh, when it comes to content publishing. And then lastly, and this is mostly what we're talking about when we're talking about a hybrid CMS is really the, the content uh, delivery piece, right? So again, .CMS is an API first system. So you can run it completely headless or pure headless as you want. And, and, and pull the content uh, and render it with your uh, proprietary delivery tier or your JavaScript framework. Now, from the get-go, .CMS uh, delivered uh, a delivery tier or a page builder, so you can use that as well. And again, the beauty is that you can use both at the same time, right? So again, this is what .CMS uh, stands for when it comes to uh, hybrid uh, CMS. And with that, I'd like to hand over to Pankaj. So, thanks everyone uh, for joining up this uh, wonderful webinar co-hosted by Content Bloom and .CMS. We will be discussing about the power and possibilities of the hybrid CMS, the various advantages it brings onto the table. And uh, we see like why this would be the most sustainable option uh, in today's world. Before we move on forward, um, I would like to give a brief introduction about myself. So I'm a principal consultant and a director of operation at Content Bloom, based out of New Delhi, India, having 16 plus of years of experience delivering digital experiences through a variety of CMSs, TXAs, CDPs, and headless implementation. Daily, I played multiple roles, a solution architect, a consultant, 
strategy builder and a digital transformation expert. And uh, one thing that might interest is I delivered my first headless implementation in 2009. It's a big one. So that's uh, very brief about me. Move on to the agenda. I talk about the various key takeaways from this specific webinar on hybrid CMS. We talk briefly about the various types of CMS architectures out there and where the hybrid CMS fits into them. We talk about the key value propositions uh, hybrid CMS provides and a side-by-side -side comparison of headless and uh, hybrid uh, functionalities. I show a very brief de demo of uh, .CMS and uh, we see how you can utilize a single piece of content in a traditional way, as well as in a headless way. And we conclude it with the, with the conclusion of this webinar. So the typical key takeaways I can think of from this webinar is identifying why hybrid content management is the most sustainable option and the various key value propositions of a modern hybrid CMS like .CMS. We start with the type of the CMS architectures. Traditional headless and hybrids are the most common one that we, we probably been seeing uh, since decades and uh, out there uh, and you know, using them in some capacity. So we start with the traditional CMS. Um, traditional, sometimes we termed it as a coupled or a monolithic CMS architecture. If you see on the right side of the slide, we can see like the content, the layout, rendering that content, various customizations are tightly coupled together to, to render a formatted experience or a predefined experience accessed across uh, various touch points in the channels. All this content, the layout, and all these customizations are being stored into the same system. And this single same system is being accessed by the content authors, by the developers, and even the website visitors in a different capacity. So that's our traditional CMS architecture. A few of the old CMS we can think about is the WordPress or Drupal. Uh, I mean, in there, you know, all the time, they have been pretty traditional CMS where the things are tightly coupled with each other. Then we moved on to the uh, headless CMS architecture. The main, um, main difference uh, with the traditional is that in the headless content and its presentations or the way that particular content has been rendered onto the different uh, devices, different channels is totally decoupled or we say like separated from each other. We can, you know, manage through different systems. The content has been managed into a specific system while that content has been used and rendered out on different devices, different, uh, let's say IoT uh, devices, different channels like digital displays uh, in the retail in, in a different format, in a different presentations through the APIs. So if you see on the right side, this content is there, which has been stored into the handless CMS. So that turns out as a, you know, a content repository essentially with no delivery capabilities. And there are some APIs, could be RESTful, could be GraphQL, could be JS. These are all the technical, technical um, API structures which can be accessed by, you know, uh, in a, in a, uh, in a non-technical fashion through the different, uh, different channels like the mobile applications, like the digital displays, like the smartwatches or any other IoT device, basically. So, when we talk about the hybrid CMS, that's the third architecture I just wanted to focus a little bit on. Hybrid CMS, when I talk about is, I mean, as the word suggests, is, is a hybrid. <laughs> it's a hybrid of some of the great features of the traditional CMS and uh, some of the, or I would say like most of the headless CMS features. They are completely uh, you know, combined to create a hybrid CMS architecture. So, you will get your content and uh, layout separated, but they also have an APIs, which is delivering more or less everything as a, as a service to the outside world. So you can choose 
to have uh, your content accessed into a pre-formatted uh, way by the by specific channels like the like the websites like the uh, mobile web or you can choose to have the api to rent, to fetch that content in a in its raw format and render it out in in a in a very specific way onto the devices like smart watches devices like digital displays across the retail store so that's where dot cms actually um, sits in in all these hybrid cms architectures Moving on to the value propositions that the hybrid CMS provides over headless or over traditional CMSs. So we see it as a best of both world. It provides you the best of the functionality from the traditional CMSs. And it also provides you everything that you will get out of a headless CMS. You will get an unprecedented authoring experiences. You can preview your page before it has been actually published onto the website. You can do the editing in a manner that you can see how my page or how my format of this specific content will look like onto the website without actually publishing it out. And you can even control the URL uh, management of, uh, of the website. So these typical, um, functionalities or these typical value propositions are not available or available in a very complex way in the headless system. So out of the box, it, it, is, it is really, really great to get these out of the hybrid CMS. Now move on to the other part. In a hybrid CMS like dot .CMS, you got your headless CMS and uh, anything as a service capabilities. So not only you have your content that can be delivered as a service to the various applications, various channels, you can have actually anything delivered as a service. It could be the roles into the system. It could be the um, user groups into the system. It could be the personalizations rules that you have into the system. All can be delivered as a, as a service in a, in a in a you know in a format that can be understandable by different devices and you can utilize that information to to actually render your uh, specific experience in a in a different context then ease of use to manage business outcomes hybrid cms typically great in that that it provides a great business outcome you can have a faster time to market like you can create a um, campaigns landing page without uh, involving much of the development or much of the you know IT teams involvement. You can create it just the, just the way you can do it into the traditional CMS systems, and you can achieve the faster time to market for your campaign landing page. On the on the on the other side, you can also have the flexibility and the fun capabilities to deliver your content, deliver your rules, deliver your roles to, to, to different devices. And you can, you can try to have this multi-channel delivery in a way to, to, generate, to generate an experience that can be, that can be uh, different uh, for different devices in different contexts. So you, you can choose to have a separate, uh, differently formatted content coming up onto your smartwatch while it is coming up differently onto your mobile applications. So these are some of the leading uh, value propositions that uh, the hybrid CMS like dot CMS provides. Moving on to a brief uh, comparison side by side. So when we talk about the hybrid CMS, it provides more or less everything that is available into your hybrid CMS. But what additionally it provides that won't be available out of the box or won't be available without much customization into a typical headless CMS. So we talk about the preview capabilities, like you have your page um, or you have your content, how it would appear upon your, uh, on your channel. You can see it into a hybrid CMS without even actually publishing it to the site. You can preview that. In the headless CMS, this is not possible out of the box drag and drop content compositions. This is great. 
headless CMS typically work as a repository of the content and it delivers it out into let's say rest manner or a XML or any other format that all the devices may understand. And it, it won't allow you a drag and drop functionality to you know show your uh, content in a, in a specific format. You, you are totally dependent on the de development team to capture that raw data and uh, you know format it out in the way that you are looking for. Hybrid CMS will let you do that. For a specific channels, you can create your pages, construct it out, and for other channels, you can just uh, have your developer do that work. Channel specific support, more or less related to what I just said, you, you will get uh, mobile, uh, mobile uh, devices, you, you can get your desktops, you can get your iPad or tab tabs to, to show um, you know, how my page will look like into that. What different uh, experience I can provide into different channels. So all that channel specific support would be there. Native personalization and targeting in headless CMS, if you have to implement a personalization and targeting, it requires a good amount of coding or the configurations or the customizations to achieve that. While the hybrid CMS, dot CMS allows it in a, in a no code manner or a very low code manner what does that mean like you can you can define your personas you can define what content will appear up for a specific user of a specific trait all that you can do it in a very configurable way into a typical hybrid cms system without much coding when we say without much coding it is a low code and there are some scenarios where you can customize those personalization rules without even a code and that would be termed as a no code. So that would be available out of the box in hybrid CMS, dot CMS having a great functionality in that area. Native experiments capability. So out of the box, you can have uh, alpha beta testing done and that analytics is available. You can, you can measure the impact of your, for example, a campaign. Like you, you sent a, camp, a specific campaign to a specific group of users who sent a uh, slight variation of that campaign to another group of a user, you get all the analytics together and uh, measure it out, which one is the more effective campaign for you. And that would be available out of the box in hybrid CMS while headless CMS, you can achieve it, but you need to do a lot of customization or coding around it. Inline editing, again, it's the same thing. In headless CMS, it requires a lots of uh, customizations or configurations. Hybrid CMS will let you do that out of the box without any even configurations available, you know, just like that. Within line editing, I mean, you are changing up a specific content and that content can be visible uh, in, in a specific format on a specific channel without even publishing. So you see like the content that you are changing it's not creating any, any bad impact onto the page and you have to revert it back, giving you a great efficiency in the content authoring. Then the another thing that comes up is the dynamic and static content mashup. When we talk about headless CMS, it's more or less even for the smallest pages, it is the dynamic. You, you, you have like everything coming up as dynamic onto the, onto the application. While, you know, there, there may be many pages which are, which need to be static, don't change in ages. So in, in hybrid CMS, you can have a single page where you want it to keep um, a content mashup of the dynamic and the static content together. You can have the hybrid implementation uh, in, the, in the way of a headless as well as a um, traditional CMS all on one single page. We, we termed it as a content mashup and that you can achieve in the hybrid CMS. I will show a very quick demo to give an idea how uh, .CMS looks like, how we can look at a page and how we can look at its uh, APIs delivering the content. So we have this uh, demo um, travel site. We talked about a uh, lots of content over here. So, it, it listing like all the activities, it lists down all the, all the uh, recommended events around you. Uh, it talks about a little bit about the specific, um, you know, adventure that you may want to go. 
So this is the website, I mean, uh, the whole page has been created into the .cms. I'm just jumping on to in the interest of time to the, uh, to the admin uh, portion of it. So this is the admin dashboard of our .cms. We go to the site and look for that specific page we have just seen. So here we go. Here's this index page we just seen. We open this page up into the .cms admin panel. And you see like, you can, you can edit it here, you can preview it here, you can edit it here, um, any of the content right in line. So that's one part of the traditional CMS. But if you have a, a specific requirement of rendering this, this page on a digital display in a specific way or on your mobile application in a specific way, you don't require to create all these content again or this page even at all at again. The API of uh, .cms will provide this whole page as a raw XML or JSON format. I can show you like here also you can see it. If I click onto the API, so this is uh, kind of my API uh, of .cms which uh, provides me the whole information about this uh, page. So you, you see like every information about this page is available in a JSON format, which would be understandable by my, you know, digital display application, as well as any other IoT applications. And I can, you know, render it out this information in a specific way I want. So this is the whole page out there. You can see it, the whole HTML of the, of the section is also there. So this is just for a page, but typically, you can do it for each and everything. For example, you have similar pages created here uh, for uh, you know, your website, which you can quickly add it or you know, create your campaign in that way. But let's think about it. You wanted to get all the products of, uh, available into this .cms. You have already created them. So all the products, what would be my uh, way to get that out? What would be my API uh, queries that I would be using? So that's also be very educating this whole interfaces. We go to the content. And here it defines like all the type of the contents that we have. So let's say we move on to the product. So what it does, it search the whole um, whole list of the product, or you know, we define them as a as a specific product. There, all the informations are here. How do you get what query you have to run to get this information in a XML or in a JSON format? So here you can go in the search, and it will say like show query. I click onto the show query and it gives you like different formats. So for example, like my velocity content poll, here's how I will do it. My listen query, this is how I will do it. This is my REST API call. So even if I hit it, this will just give me the whole JSON. And I can choose to have my XML format just like that. Or I can have my JSON format just like that. This is my whole JSON of each and every products available into this demo websites. So I can utilize this JSON in a way, whatever I want for my applications on a different channels. So that's a very brief uh, demo. I'm coming back to the uh, presentations to discuss about the various conclusions. So the conclusion of our discussion today is hybrid CMS one, it allows a great reduction in your IT cost. The reason is that it, it self-sufficient the entire marketing operations related to your websites, related to the campaign, related to the landing pages. On the other side, hybrid CMS allows delivering of the content across a variety of channels without a lock-in with a vendor, without a lock-in with a technology, or without a lock-in with a specific format or a layout completely free, whatever technology you want to use, you utilize the headless CMS feature of .CMS and implement in the format, in the layout that you want to have. 
So finally, hybrid CMS allows to get a best of both worlds, traditional and headless CMS through the traditional CMS features, as well as anything as a service capabilities. So that's pretty much the conclusion. Um, if I move forward, we I'm open to, to the questions we can answer. We're gonna open up for questions now.